What's going on guys, my name's Theo Atrix and welcome to my complete level 1 to 99 ranged guide. This video will teach you everything you need to know about training your range level in RuneScape. I'll go through the quests, the gear, the items, some low level training areas, then I'll talk about some higher level training areas as well as the fastest way to get to 99. Towards the end of the video I'll also talk about the bosses that you can fight with ranged which I think is a pretty cool addition to this video. If you learn anything or enjoy the video be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Starting off with how ranged works. Range is one of the most powerful combat styles in old school RuneScape. Getting your range level up increases both your max hit with ranged and your accuracy. Your ranged attack bonus usually comes from your weapon and armor and that bonus increases solely your accuracy. Your range strength bonus comes from arrows and some weapons and gear as well, and this bonus will solely increase your max hit. At higher range levels, you gain access to some of the highest tier of weaponry, armor, and ammo in the game, which have very high bonuses. A bow unlocked at level 75, the Twisted Bow, scales to your enemy's magic level, making it one of the most powerful weapons against a lot of the bosses in old school. And also there's the Ballistas, which weren't in RuneScape back in the day, but can now be used to fire javelins, and the heavy ballista hits some of the highest damage hits in the game. With pretty much all ranged weapons that you use, you have access to three different combat styles, accurate, rapid, or long range. Accurate and long range shoot at the same rate of fire, but rapid fire shoots one tick faster than accurate and long range. Long range obviously shoots from a further distance as well, and it also gives you defense XP along with range XP. Accurate gives you an invisible plus three boost to your range level which makes it very, very good to use at low range levels since if you're training at one ranged, you're effectively at level four ranged if you're using accurate. Once you go above and beyond level 10 ranged, you should always be using rapid for the maximum damage per second and XP rates. Now I'd like to go over some of the ranged gear. If you'd like to see everything you unlock when you're training ranged, you can click on the ranged icon in your skills tab and it tells you every weapon, armor, ammo that you can use. Now all of these weapons give an attack bonus and then pairing them with ammunition adds the strength bonus. You'll notice that some of these weapons can't fire high level arrows or high level bolts. The Bone Crossbow is a great way to train your ranged for a really low cost since bone bolts are around 3 coins each. You don't actually need to do a quest in order to be able to use the Dorgashan Crossbow, and one that not many people know about is the Carol's Crossbow, and each bolt rack from the Carol's Crossbow is only around 30 coins, which makes it an excellent training weapon with range. I've included the cannon on this list as well, I'm going to talk a lot more about that further in the video, and using a cannon is actually the fastest way to level your range at low level. Iron knives are a great way to train at things like rock crabs at a very low level, but once you unlock mithril darts, it's very recommended to use them since they give the exact same bonuses as iron knives, attack at the same speed as iron knives, but they're a little bit cheaper. At high levels, the blowpipe and chin chompers are the fastest way to get XP, and I'll talk a lot about chinning further on. Now in terms of range gear, you should always be using the best dehyde armor you can wear. Above level 70, you have access to pretty much every range gear in the game, and Armadil being the most expensive is the best in slot for range. Void and Elite Void are great budget setups, and you should always pair your training armor with Arva's devices in order to not lose a heap of money while you're training. For things like Slayer, when you'll be using Prayer, God Dehyde works very well since it gives a little bit of an extra Prayer bonus at the same time. The Green Dehyde body actually requires Dragon Slayer, but the other Dragon Hide bodies do not need Dragon Slayer. And one more thing is using Wines when you're training ranged. Wines reduce your attack level, and your attack level does not matter when you're training range, so wines become a great way to heal up, and they're ridiculously cheap. Now I'd like to go over some useful quests that you should do before you train your ranged. The Dwarf Cannon quest gives you access to the Dwarf Multi Cannon, which as I said is the fastest way to train at a low level, and makes your Slayer training very efficient. The Horror from the Deep quest gives you access to the God Books, and the Armadil Book gives you a plus 10 ranged attack bonus. Animal Magnetism gives you access to Arva's Attractor and Arva's Accumulator. Doing Dragon Slayer 2 on top of that gives you Arva's Assembler, and these devices are much recommended for range training, since picking up arrows will impair your XP rates by a lot. As well as those quests, the Temple of Ikov is a great quest for XP, and you get 10.5k ranged 
damaged XP just for finishing the quest. Pewers can do this quest as well, and it's a requirement for Desert Treasure. Monkey Madness 1 and 2 both give major benefits when training ranged. Monkey Madness 2 is a lot better to complete since the chinning caves that you get access to are a lot better in terms of XP rates, but the Monkey Madness 1 chinning caves still work for lower levels. I'd now like to go over some low level training spots which are mainly safe spottable and these monsters don't have very high defense bonuses. At a low level you can be using iron knives or mithril darts or the Dorgashan crossbow is a great way to train. Sand crabs, rock crabs, ammonite crabs and swamp crabs are probably the greatest way to train your range at a lower level. I'm going to talk a lot more about those crabs in the pure friendly section. But another low level training spot that is good for ranged is safe spotting the hill giants in Edgefield Dungeon. These guys drop the giant key which gives you access to fighting Obor which can really change up your training a bit. The ogres near Castle Wars is a great safe spotting area to train your range and make a little bit of money from the herb and seed drops but almost always there's people with a cannon here, so it's usually pretty crowded. Moss giants are also a great way to safe spot and train your ranged. They can be found in Ardoyan or in the end of the Varrock sewer, and they have a very low range defense bonus, making them great to train on with a low range level. If you have a really low amount of money, I'd recommend buying bronze arrows. And the reason for that is there's a 20% chance that arrows will be lost when you shoot them. And that's the same for every single type of arrow. Using rune arrows, or amethyst arrows doesn't mean that they're going to break less than bronze arrows. This is the same when wearing Arva's devices. Arva's will not favor higher level arrows. I thought that was a pretty interesting tip, I should add. Next thing I want to talk about is using the dwarf multi cannon. And training with the cannon is very, very expensive. But since the cannon has a max hit of 30 with regular cannonballs or 35 with granite cannonballs, you can get massive ranged XP rates even at level 1, since that max hit does not change based on your range level. When you're cannoning, you should have gear on that gives you a very high attack bonus in whatever style you're using. So in a way, having a higher range level with higher range bonus will increase the accuracy of your cannon, but the max hit of it will never change. I'd like to show you guys some profitable places that you can use a cannon to train your ranged. A good example is Ice Trolls, and after the Fremenic Isles quest, you can go to Jatizo by boarding the boat in Relica and then running to the ice area to the north. You can set up a cannon on the Ice Trolls and they drop tons of valuable alcables and expensive shields that make it guaranteed to break even when training with a cannon or make a little bit of profit as well. These should always be done on a troll slayer task and can give very high slayer XP rates as well. Scabarites are unlocked after doing most of the contact quest and you can profit over 500k per hour even with a cannon. They're located in the Sophenum dungeon and the fastest way there has to be using the Pharaoh Scepter. The Locust Riders drop so many noted items and high level alcables making your trips last a very long time and you get very fast range XP at the same time. Now with both of these methods, Ice Trolls and Scabarites, you can pair both of them with the Bone Crusher and the dragon bone necklace and this reduces the need for using prayer potions and saves you a lot of money in the long run. Using the Dwarf Cannon paired with Slayer is one of the most efficient ways to train your rain. You get approximately 0.75 ranged XP per Slayer XP that you get when you're training. So this means getting to 99 Slayer while using your cannon, you'll get around 95 range. Some examples of tasks that you should be using your cannon on are Sockwas, which you can get up to 60k Slayer XP per hour, Cow Fights, which are extremely fast with a cannon. Now for those people that are willing to spend a little bit more money on 99 range, I'm going to show the absolute fastest ways to 99 now, but further on, I'll talk about some good alternative methods. The fastest way above 70 ranged is using the Dwarf Cannon. Pairing it with Slayer or the Ogres at Castle Wars, you can get 70 ranged in under 10 hours. Getting to 75 using a cannon will cost you around 8 to 9 mil, which translates to almost 10 GP per XP, making it a very expensive way to train. Now you unlock chinning at a far lower range level, but it's only recommended to start once you hit above 70 range. There's three types of chin chompers you have access to, and grey chin chompers are the cheapest ones to train with, but give the slowest XP rate. I made a recent guide about chinning at the Monkey Madness 2 caves. In that video, I talk about 
all of the requirements and the best gear you should be using. For lower level players that haven't done Monkey Madness 2, the Monkey Madness 1 caves still give excellent XP rates when it comes to chinning. And getting to 99, using red chin chompers, it can cost over 50 mil and with black chin chompers, over 80 mil to get to 99. Your XP rates with black chins can reach over 1 million XP per hour, making it easily the fastest way to train your ranged in the game. You can only get these XP rates if you use the method at the Monkey Madness 2 caves where you constantly stack the monkeys on top of each other. By doing that, your chin chompers always hit the maximum number of targets they can, giving you huge XP drops. So cannoning and then chinning is the fastest way to 99 range, but now I'd like to talk about some alternatives, starting off with some AFK methods to 99. First up is Ammonite Crabs, and in order to be able to kill these, you need to have access to Fossil Island, which requires the Bone Voyage quest. Ammonite Crabs are extremely commonly trained on, since they have a combat level of 25 and have 100 hit points. They have a max hit of 1 as well, which means they'll almost never lower your health down much. Ammonite Crabs also drop fossils, which collecting a bunch of different items from the fossils, you can get an XP lamp and kudos. These guys can be trained on all the way through to 99 range, but by the higher range levels, you'll have access to a few better monsters to train with for AFK training. Bandits in the Caridian Desert have always been a great option for training your combat AFK in RuneScape. By wearing a Saradomen or a Zamorak item, the bandits stay aggressive to you forever, which means you'll only log out if you don't click or move or change anything after 20 minutes. The next one is the Nightmare Zone, and you can get up to 90k XP per hour here if you're using a blowpipe and good ranged gear, and this requires almost no attention at all once you've set it up. The Nightmare Zone is especially important to get out of the way so you can get all of the imbued items, so if you've never been there, I'd recommend at least training there for a while until you unlock some of the items like the imbued archer ring or the imbued slayer helmet. Now for some pure friendly methods, and the first one is using the ranged guild. And by doing the mini game all the way at the back of the ranged guild where you shoot the targets, you gain decently fast range XP over 40k XP an hour, while getting no hit points XP at all, similar to what would happen if you are using a cannon. I spoke earlier about sand crabs and the other crabs, and sand crabs and rock crabs are great places to train as a pure, but swamp crabs are one that not many people train at, and what makes swamp crabs so good is they have a ranged defense bonus of negative 55, meaning you'll almost always hit something when you're training ranged. They also have a max hit of 1 and 75 hit points, making them decent AFK XP at the same time. Also in the Port Phasmatis area is the Experiments, and these guys are level 25 with 100 hit points. They're a great low effort way to train your ranged, and usually aren't very crowded anymore either. Now I want to talk about the bosses that you can fight with ranged, and the first one is Jad. And once you unlock the rune crossbow, you have a decent shot at completing Jad. The fight caves take usually over one hour, and killing him rewards you with the fire cape. The King Black Dragon is another boss that is very weak to range, and once you hit 61 range, you can very easily go and join a team, and go kill the King Black Dragon with ruby bolts and diamond bolts to deal the most amount of damage. Kriara is the armadil boss, and the best way to kill her is by using ranged as well. Zora, the solo only boss, also has a form that is weak to ranged, and Vorkarth is most commonly killed with range, and can actually be killed on a blue dragon task as well. The first boss I recommend killing after you level your range up is going for the fire cape at Jad. It will most likely take you a few attempts to get all the mechanics right, but increasing your range level will make it easier and easier. Quickly, I wanted to go over some free-to-play training methods, and the Ogress Warriors are probably my favorite place to train in free-to-play, because they drop a lot of alkable drops and valuable runes, which will add up to a lot of money in the long run. You can find these guys underground at Corsair Cove, and they're very easily safe spottable, and also drop big bones for you to train your prayer. Now I'd like to quickly summarize the entire ranged guide. Probably the most useful quest for training ranged is the Animal Magnetism quest for the Arva's devices. At low levels, you can train at a range of safe spottable monsters, most of them being giants, and I covered the Ice Trolls and the Scabarites as profitable ways to train your ranged with a cannon. I strongly recommend these to people that have unlocked them, because you'll get massive ranged XP rates while making money. I also spoke about Chinning, which is the fastest XP rate at high levels. In the AFK methods, we had the Ammonite Crabs, 
the bandits in the Caridian Desert, and the Nightmare Zone, which is a lot more expensive than the other methods, but gives better XP rates, then the pure friendly methods, which included the ranged guild, which doesn't give hit points XP like cannoning, the sand crabs, rock crabs, and the swamp crabs, which have a negative range defense bonus, experiments, which have a very, very high hit points level, and then I lastly went through the bosses you can fight with ranged. Thanks for watching my 1 to 99 ranged guide. If you'd like to view the written version of this guide, head over to theoatrix.net slash ranged. That'll be live shortly after making this video, and I hope I've taught you guys something pretty interesting about range today. If you learned something or found some new training spots, be sure to leave a like, and make sure to subscribe if you're new to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.